Ethiopian National Defense Force. The Ethiopian National Defense Force, ENDF, is the military of Ethiopia. Civil direction of the military is carried out through the Ministry of Defense, which oversees the ground forces, air force, as well as the defense industry sector. The current defense minister is Moda Mamakasa. The size of the ENDF has fluctuated significantly since the end of the Ethiopia-Eritrea War in 2000. In 2002 the Ethiopian Defense Forces had a strength of approximately 400,000 troops. This was roughly the same number maintained during the Derg regime that fell to the rebel forces in 1991. However, that number was later reduced, and in January 2007, during the war in Somalia, Ethiopian forces were said to comprise about 300,000 troops. In 2012, the IS estimated that the ground forces had 135,000 personnel and the Air Force 3,000. As of 2012, the INF consists of two separate branches, the ground forces and the Ethiopian Air Force. Ethiopia has several defense industrial organizations that produce and overhaul different weapons systems. Most of these were built under the Derg regime which planned a large military industrial complex. The INF relies on voluntary military service of people above 18 years of age. Although there is no compulsory military service, Armed forces may conduct call-ups when necessary and compliance is compulsory. Being a landlocked country, Ethiopia today has no navy. Ethiopia reacquired a coastline on the Red Sea in 1950 and created the Ethiopian Navy in 1955. Eritrea's independence in 1991 left Ethiopia landlocked again, but the Ethiopian Navy continued to operate from foreign ports until it finally was disbanded in 1996. The Ethiopian army's origins and military traditions date back to the earliest history of Ethiopia. Due to Ethiopia's location between the Middle East and Africa, it has long been in the middle of Eastern and Western politics, and has been subject to foreign invasion and aggression. In 1579, the Ottoman Empire's attempt to expand from a coastal base at Misawa was defeated. The army of the Ethiopian Empire was also able to defeat the Egyptians in 1876 at Gura led by Ethiopian Emperor Johannes IV. Clapham wrote in the 1980s that the Abyssinians, had suffered, from a superiority complex which may be traced to Gundet, Gurin Adwa. In accordance with the order of the Emperor of Ethiopia, directly Nikolai Leontiev organized the 1st Battalion of the Regular Ethiopian Army in February 1899. Leontiev formed the 1st Regular Battalion, the colonel of which became the company of volunteers from the former Senegal shooters which he chose and invited from Western Africa, with training of the Russian and French officers. The first Ethiopian military orchestra was organized at the same time. The Battle of Adoa is the best-known victory of Ethiopian forces over invaders. It maintained Ethiopia's existence as an independent state. Fought on March 1, 1896 against the Kingdom of Italy near the town of Adwa. It was the decisive battle of the First Italo-Ethiopian War. Assisted by all of the major nobles of Ethiopia including, Elula Abenaka, Nikas, Tekel Haymano of Gojam, Sapat Aragawi, Raz Makonan, Raz Mangesha Johannes, and Raz Mikel of Bulo, Emperor Menelik II of Ethiopia struck a powerful blow against the Italians. The Ethiopian army had been able to execute the strategic plan of Menelik's headquarters, despite a feudal system of organization and adverse circumstances. A special role was played by the Russian military advisors in the volunteers of Leontiev's mission. The first problem was the quality of its arms, as the Italian and British colonial authorities were able to sabotage the transportation of 60,000 to 100,000 modern burden rifles from Russia into landlocked Ethiopia. Secondly, the Ethiopian army was based on a feudal system of organization, and as a result, nearly the entire army was a peasant militia. Russian military experts advising Menelik II suggested trying to achieve full battle collision with Italians, to neutralize the superior firepower of their opponent and potentially nullify their problems with arms, training, and organization, rather than engaging in a campaign of harassment. In the battle that ensued, wave upon wave of Menelik's warriors successfully attacked the Italians. After the successful colonial capture of the Sudan, Kenya, and Uganda, the British expansion against Ethiopia became a real danger, which diminished only after the start of the Second Boer War in 1899. The Ethiopian army became more effective against British colonial forces. The numerous expeditions of Ethiopian forces stopped colonial expansion. 
as the Russian Alexander Bulatovich, one of the Russian military advisors and a participant in the expedition of the legendary army of Rasvalda Georgis, wrote. Many consider the Abyssinian army to be undisciplined. They think that it is not in any condition to withstand a serious fight with a well-organized European army, claiming that the recent war with Italy doesn't prove anything. I will not begin to guess the future, and will say only this dot over the course of four months, I watched this army closely. It is unique in the world. And I can bear witness to the fact that it is not quite so chaotic as it seems at first glance, and that on the contrary, it is profoundly disciplined, though in its own unique way. For every Abyssinian, war is normal business, and military skills and rules of army life in the field enter in the flesh and blood of each of them, just as do the main principles of tactics. On the march, each soldier knows how to arrange necessary comforts for himself and to conserve his strength, but on the other hand, when necessary, he shows such endurance and is capable of action in conditions which are difficult even to imagine. You see remarkable expediency in all the actions and skills of this army, and each soldier has an amazingly intelligent attitude toward managing the mission off the battle. Despite such qualities, because of its impetuousness, it is much more difficult to control this army than a well drilled European army, and I can only marvel at and admire the skill of its leaders and chiefs, of which there is no shortage. In obedience to the agreement with Russia and the order of Menelik II, first Ethiopian officers began to be trained at the first Russian cadet school in 1901. 30 to 40 Ethiopian officers were trained in Russia from 1901 until 1913. Modernization of the army took place under the regency of Tafari Makanan, who later reigned as Emperor Haile Selassie I. He created an imperial bodyguard, the Kbur Zabanya. In 1917 from the earlier Mahal Safari who had traditionally attended the Ethiopian Emperor. Its elite were trained at the French Military Academy at Sancerre or by Belgian military advisors. He also created his own military school at Holta in January 1935. Ethiopian military aviation efforts were initiated in 1929. When Afari Makanan hired two French pilots and purchased four French biplanes. By the time of the Italian invasion of 1935, the Air Force had four pilots and 13 aircraft. However, these efforts were not sufficient nor instituted in enough time to stop the rising tide of Italian fascism. Ethiopia lost its independence in the Italian invasion of Ethiopia of 1935 36, marked for the first time Ethiopia was colonized by a foreign power. The country regained its independence after the 1941 East African Campaign of World War II with the intervention of forces from the British Commonwealth of Nations. After the Italians had been driven from the country, a British military mission to Ethiopia, under Major General Stephen Butler, was established to reorganize the Ethiopian army. The Anglo Ethiopian Agreement of 1944 removed the BMME from the jurisdiction of East Africa Command at Nairobi and made it responsible to the Ethiopian Minister of War. Ethiopia bought 20 A4 tank hats from Sweden in the late 1940s. They arrived in Djibouti on May 9, 1950 after which they were carried by rail to Addis Ababa. They were used until the 1980s when they participated in the fighting against Somalia. In keeping with the principle of collective security, for which Haile Selassie was an outspoken proponent, Ethiopia sent a contingent under General Mulu Getabuli, known as the Kagno Battalion, to take part in the Korean War. It was attached to the American 7th Infantry Division, and fought in a number of engagements including the Battle of Pork Chop Hill. 3,518 Ethiopian troops served in the war, where 121 were killed and 536 wounded during the Korean War. On May 22, 1953, a U.S.-Ethiopian Mutual Defense Assistance Agreement was signed. A U.S. Military Assistance Advisory Group was dispatched to Ethiopia and began its work by reorganizing the army into three divisions. On September 25, 1953, Selassie created the Imperial Ministry of National Defense that unified Army, Air Force, and Navy. The first, second, and third divisions were established with their headquarters at Addis Ababa, Asmara, and Harar, respectively. By 1956, the three divisions had a total of 16,832 troops. In May 1959, he established the Imperial Territorial Army as a reserve force of thought provided military training to civil servants. In 1960 the U.S. Army Area Handbook for Ethiopia described the very personalized command arrangements then used by the Emperor. The Emperor is by constitutional provision commander-in-chief, 
and to him are reserved all rights respecting the size of the forces and their organization and command, together with the power to appoint, promote, transfer and dismiss military officers. He seeks the advice and consent of Parliament in declaring war. Traditionally, he assumes personal command of the forces in time of war. The office of the Chief of Staff of the Imperial Ethiopian Armed Forces directed the commanders of the Army, Air Force, and Navy, and the three Army Divisions were a directly responsible to the commander of the Army. The three divisions seemingly included the 3rd Division in the Ogaden, seen as a hardship post. While technically the Imperial Bodyguard, Kbur Zabania, was responsible to the Army commander, in reality its commander received his orders directly from Emperor. Balam Barazabebe Aragai was one of the noted patriotic resistance leaders of Shoah, Central Ethiopia, that rose to preeminence in the post-liberation period. He became Raz, a general and minister of defense of the Imperial Ethiopian Armed Forces until his death in the 1960 Ethiopian coup attempt. Ethiopia contributed troops for the United Nations operation in the Congo. The United Nations operation in the Congo, from July 1960. By July 20, 1960, 3,500 troops for Onik had arrived in the Congo. The 3,500 consisted of 460 troops from Ethiopia, later to grow into the Tekel Brigade, as well as troops from Ghana, Morocco, and Tunisia. Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie raised some 3,000 Imperial Bodyguard personnel about 10% of the Ethiopian Army's entire strength at that time and made it part of the UN peacekeeping force in the Congo along with an Air Force squadron. This volunteer battalion from the Imperial Bodyguard were authorized by the Emperor. The Tekel, or Tekel, Brigade was stationed in Stanleyville. Aman Mikel Ondam commanded the 3rd Division during the Ogun War of 1964. He later became Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces in July 1974, and then Minister of Defense. He then became Chairman of the Derg from September to December 1974. Emperor Haile Selassie divided the Ethiopian military into separate commands. The U.S. Army Handbook for Ethiopia notes that each service was provided with training and equipped from different foreign countries to assure reliability and retention of power. The military consisted of the following, Imperial Bodyguard also known as the 1st Division, 8,000 men, 3 Army Divisions, services which included the Airborne, Engineers, and Signal Corps, the Territorial Army 5,000 men and the police, 28,000 men. Among reported U.S. equipment deliveries to Ethiopia were 120 M59 and 39 M75 armored personnel carriers. By July 1975 the International Institute for Strategic Studies was listing a mechanized division in addition to three infantry divisions, S75-76, P-42, and it appears that there were five divisions active by the time of the 1977 Ogaden War. With significant Soviet assistance, after that point force size grew rapidly. The Coordinating Committee of the Armed Forces, Police, and Territorial Army, or the Derg, and Harak Committee, was officially announced 28 of June 1974 by a group of military officers to maintain law and order due to the powerlessness of the civilian government following widespread mutiny in the armed force off Ethiopia earlier that year. Its members were not directly involved in those mutinies. Nor was this the first military committee organized to support the administration of Prime Minister Indalkachu Makonan. Alain Zou Tisema had established the Armed Forces Coordinated Committee 23rd of March. However, over the following months, radicals in the Ethiopian military came to believe he was acting on behalf of the hated aristocracy. And when a group of notables petitioned for the release of a number of government ministers and officials who were under arrest for corruption and other crimes, three days later the Derg was announced. The Derg which originally consisted of soldiers at the capital, broadened its membership by including representatives from the 40 units of the Ethiopian Army, Air Force, Navy, Kbur Zabanya, Imperial Guard, Territorial Army and Police. Each unit was expected to send three representatives, who were supposed to be privates, NCOs and junior officers up to the rank of major. According to Baru Sud, senior officers were deemed too compromised by close association to the regime. The committee elected Major Mangis to Haile Mariam as its chairman and Major Adnafu Abate as its vice chairman. The Derg was initially supposed to study the grievances of various military units, and investigate abuses by senior officers and staff, and to root out corruption in the military. In the months following its founding, the power of the Derg steadily increased. In July 1974, the Derg obtained key concessions from the Emperor, Haile Selassie, 
which included the power to arrest not only military officers, but government officials at every level. Soon both former Prime Ministers Tsefi Tizes Akhilu Habdawald, and Ndelka Chumakonan, along with most of their cabinets, most regional governors, many senior military officers and officials off the imperial court found themselves in prison. When the Derg gained control of Ethiopia, they lessened their reliance on the West. Instead they began to draw their equipment and their sources for organizational and training methods from the Soviet Union and other Comic-Con countries, especially Cuba. During this period, Ethiopian forces were often locked in counterinsurgency campaigns against various guerrilla groups. They honed both conventional and guerrilla tactics during campaigns in Eritrea, and the Ethiopian civil war that toppled Ethiopian former military dictator Mengistu Haile Mariam in 1991 and also by repelling an invasion launched by Somalia in the 1977-1978 Ogaden War. The Ethiopian army grew considerably under the Derg, 1974-1987, and the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia under Mengistu, 1987-1991 especially during the latter regime. Gebru Tark describes the organization of the Ethiopian military in early 1990, a year before Mangista fled the country. Estimated forces under arms increased dramatically. Cuba provided a significant influx of military advisors and troops over this period, with the largest escalation during the Ogaden War with Somalia, supported by a Soviet airlift. By 1991, the Ethiopian army under the Mangista government had grown in size, but the regime was overcome by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, IPRDF, People's Front for Democracy and Justice, PFDJ, former EPLF, or Oma Liberation Front, OLF, and other opposition factions during a decades-long civil war. Mangistu's People's Militia had also grown to about 200,000 members. The mechanized forces of the army comprised 1,200 T-54-55,100 T-62 tanks, and 1,100 armored personnel carriers, APCs, but readiness was estimated to be only about 30% operational, because of the withdrawal of financial support, lack of maintenance expertise and parts from the Soviet Union, Cuba and other nations. The army commands consisted of the following. To these armies were assigned the operational forces of the army comprising. After the defeat of the military government in 1991, the provisional government disbanded the former National Army and relied on its own guerrilla fighters for national security. In 1993, however, the Tigrayan-led government announced plans to create a multi-ethnic defense force. This process entailed the creation of a new professional army and officer class and the demobilization of many of the irregulars who had fought against the military government. With the collapse of the Soviet Union Ethiopia again turned to the Western powers for alliance and assistance. However, many Tigrayan officers remained in command positions. This transformation was still underway when war with Eritrea broke out in 1998, a development that saw the ranks of the armed forces swell along with defense expenditures. Although the armed forces have significant battlefield experience, their militia orientation has complicated the transition to a structured, integrated military. Ranks and conventional units were only adopted in 1996. A United States-assisted effort to restructure the armed forces was interrupted by mobilization for the war with Eritrea. The former allies of PRDF and PFDJ, former EPLF, led their countries Ethiopia and Eritrea, respectively, into the Eritrean-Ethiopian War of 1998. The war was fought over the disputed region of Badm. During the course of the war, some commanders and pilots from the former Army and Air Force were recalled to duty. These officers helped turn the tide decisively against Eritrea in 2000. Following the war's end, the Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission, a body founded by the UN, established that the Baden region had in fact belonged to Eritrea. Although the two countries are now at peace, Ethiopia rejected the results of the International Court's decision, and continued to occupy Badm. Most observers agree that Ethiopia's rejection of international law, coupled with the high numbers of soldiers maintained on the border by each side, a debilitatingly high number, particularly for the Eritrean side, means that the two countries are effectively still in conflict. After the September 11 attacks in 2001, the Ethiopian army began to train with the U.S. Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa, CJTF Hoa, establish a Djibouti. Ethiopia allowed the U.S. to station military advisors at Camp Urso. Part of the training at Camp Urso has included U.S. Army elements, including 4th Battalion, 
31st Infantry, training the 12th, 13th and 14th Division Reconnaissance Companies, which from July 2003 were being formed into a new Ethiopian anti-terrorism battalion. Ethiopian troops helped drive the Islamic Courts Union out of Mogadishu in Somalia. In December 2006, they entered Somalia to confront the Islamic Courts Union, initially winning the Battle of Baidawa. This led to the seizure of Mogadishu by Ethiopian troops and TFG militias, and subsequent heavy fighting there. After the Islamists split into two groups, moderate Islamists led by Sheikh Ahmed signed a UN backed peace deal with the TFG and established a larger government in Mogadishu. Ethiopian troops withdrew as part of the terms of the peace deal. Government forces have been engaged in battle against Ogaden insurgents led by the Ogaden National Liberation Front. Gaberhard commanded the forces in Somalia. As of 2014, the Ethiopian troops in Somalia are being integrated into the Amisum peacekeeping force. According to Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Ambassador Dina Mufti, the Ethiopian military's decision to join Amisum is intended to render the peacekeeping operation more secure. Analysts also suggested that the move was primarily motivated by financial considerations, with the Ethiopian force's operational costs now slated to be under Amisum's allowance budget. It is believed that the Ethiopian military's long experience in Somali territory, its equipment such as helicopters, and the potential for closer coordination will help the Allied forces advance their territorial gains. Ethiopia has served in various United Nations and African Union peacekeeping missions. These have included Ivory Coast, on the Burundi border, and in Rwanda. Two major Ethiopian missions are in Liberia and Darfur. The United Nations mission in Liberia, UNMIL, was established by United Nations Security Council Resolution 1509, of September 19, 2003, to support the implementation of the ceasefire agreement and the peace process, protect United Nations staff, facilities and civilians, support humanitarian and human rights activities, as well as assist in national security reform, including national police training and formation of a new, restructured military. In November 2007, Nearly 1,800 Ethiopian troops serving with the United Nations mission in Liberia, UNMIL, were represented with UN peacekeeping medals for their invaluable contribution to the peace process. Up to three Ethiopian battalions used to constitute Sector 4 of the UN mission, covering the southern part of the country. Many thousands of Ethiopian peacekeepers are involved in the joint African Union-United Nations hybrid operation in Darfur. Western Sudan. The Security Council authorized an unarmed force of about 26,000 uniformed personnel. Ethiopia also provides the entire force for the UN's Abe mission, the United Nations Interim Security Force for Abe. An Ethiopian officer commands the force. The International Institute for Strategic Studies estimated in the military balance 2009 that the army comprised four military regional commands Northern, HQ Michele, Western, Central, and Eastern, each acting as core HQ, there also being a support command and a strategic reserve of four divisions and six specialist brigades centered on Addis Ababa. Each of the four corps comprises a headquarters, an estimated one mechanized division and between four to six infantry divisions. In 2014 the regional commanders were listed by dissident sources as The modern INF has a wide mix of equipment. Many of its major weapons systems stem from the communist era and are of Soviet and Eastern Bloc design. The United States was Ethiopia's major arms supplier from the end of the Second World War until 1977, when Ethiopia began receiving massive arms shipments from the Soviet Union. These shipments, including armored patrol boats, transport and jet fighter aircraft, helicopters, tanks, trucks, missiles, artillery, and small arms have incurred an unserviced Ethiopian debt to the former Soviet Union estimated at more than $3.5 billion. Ethiopia made significant purchases of arms from Russia in late 1999 and early 2000 before the May 2000 United Nations arms embargo went into effect. It is likely that much of that equipment suffered battle damage in the war with Eritrea. Thus, raw numbers alone will probably overstate the capacity of the end. The military balance 2012 estimated that about 450 BRDM, BMP, BTR-60, BTR-152, and Type 89 armored fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers were in service. A total of 1,270 T-55-900 from, plus 40 from Belarus, plus 190 from Bulgaria, plus 50 from, plus 90 from and 260 T-54. 
200 from the USSR and 60 from East Germany may have been in service over the years. Up to 150 M113 armored personnel carriers may have been delivered from the United States. 16 M55 quad quadruple anti-aircraft machine guns may have been in service from the U.S. M163 Vulcan self-propelled anti-aircraft guns may have been ordered but never delivered. Sources on defense in Ethiopia include Jeffrey Isima, report on the current position with regard to the security sector in Ethiopia, 2003, SSR in Ethiopia, a prerequisite for democracy. A note indicating British supported stat slash DFID slash FCO slash MA defense transformation in Ethiopia in Bendix and Stanley 2008, and of Dejimobi and Vineka, budgeting for the military sector in Africa, ch. 3, Nathan 2007 on DDR Commission. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.